Hey folks, um, my name is uh, David Schmidt. Uh, you can find me on various media. Um, I'm currently, the, uh, for the last year, I've been the uh, tech lead for developer experience of Puppet. Um, and we worked on a couple of projects to make uh, the life easier for modern developers. Um, just a quick show of hands. One of you um, has been working or is working on a Puppet module that uh, contains native code. All right. Um, which one of you actually enjoyed the experience? Uh, yeah, I envy your your um, pain resistance. Um, so one of the things uh, we came up with um, is a new resource API. Um, uh, for, for all of you who have not been working on on those. Um, native providers. Uh, let me give you a quick introduction on what providers are in the Puppet ecosystem. Um, they are basically how Puppet knows um, how to manage small bits of your systems that you want to change. Um, the type um, defines the shape of the resource, which attributes are there that can be manipulated, what's the name, uh, and what are the positive values for that. Um, it the provider itself then allows you to read the state of those resources um, and finally enforce a desired state onto that system. And that's how Puppet interacts with um, all uh, resources out there. Um, Puppet Core has some well-known providers like um, File, Package, User. Um, many modules uh, have built-in resources, like the AWS module has built-in resources for EC2 instances, RDS, etc., etc. Um, then there, are, uh, like Marcus just showed, the KDB key, again, a native provider, um, where a small piece of Ruby code interfaces between the Puppet manifest language and uh, the actual real world systems. So, a uh, quick overview, because I uh, uh, don't have much time here. Um, this is how resources looked like in Puppet 3, and uh, much to our embarrassment goes in Puppet 4. Um, up here you um, define a new type as uh, a snippet of Ruby um, that gets passed in more code than like down here, which defines a property called size uh, with uh, a description in it. And this here says it's usually a multiple of 1024, and this property is read only. Um, so there are quite a few problems with this approach that we found over the years. Um, one, it's Ruby code, so if another consumer wants to gain an understanding of uh, how that resource type looks like, um, you need to run the Ruby code, and to run the Ruby code, you need all of Puppet, which is a quite sizable code base, and which makes it uh, very inconvenient to re use those resources or even interrogate what resources are available and how they look like from outside of Puppet. The other thing is, um, since the properties down here are also um, defined as code, if you have um, specific validation needs, like, oh, this actually should only be a number, um, all of that is usually encoded in either regular expressions um, or custom code, which again is not uh, directly available outside of Puppet itself. And finally, um, you'll notice that the description here says this property is read-only, which if you have resources that also uh, can show you more state of the system than it's actually able to manage, um, the only thing that uh, keeps users from trying to push values into that is this sentence there, and maybe a hand-coded um, check in the provider itself. Um, but again, uh, usually convenient to use or um, really safe to, to use. Um, if, if you have special requirements, like a Boolean uh, property, I did not, I was not able to fit that code onto a slide, so I'll, I'll spare you the pain of that. Um, because, as I said, Resource API um, is now uh, gearing up to change that significantly and make all of this much easier. So here we have the shape of a, a new style resource. Um, the, for now, 
since um, it's the uh, pre-release, um, you need to require the public resource API on top here and then pass in a data structure into a single function call. Um, again, um, to make it currently work with auto-loading and because we, we are still uh, working on the details there, um, currently this is still Ruby code, but the core information of that is just a Ruby hash um, that can easily be loaded from JSON or something else if you, if you want so, and, and that's what we're planning for uh, the next step. But it's just a Ruby hash. Uh, it has the name, it has the doc string here, it has some features that your implementation has, and then down here it just has a list of attributes, for example, the ensure attribute here with the usual definition of uh, present absent. Um, as you can see here, um, now uh, this fully uh, supports Papa 4 data types, so there is no uh, ambiguity around what uh, possible values go into your uh, provider. Um, here on the right side, um, the size attribute from before. This is now an integer, and you can specify the read-only behavior here, um, and all of that works out of the box um, as expected. And you don't need any custom code on the provider to make that happen. Um, since talking about code is boring, uh, I'll, uh, I've brought a small demo here. Um, all of this works uh, with uh, current code, at least uh, with um, the nightly release of the PDK. Um, so this is the only um, one fully released piece of software I'll show you. Um, uh, the next version of the PDK will have that built in, at least as an experimental feature. Um, as I said, we're still um, we're using this already internally, um, but we want to get your feedback on how this works out for you and what you uh, would like to see next in there and what doesn't work for you so that we can uh, make it better over the next uh, few weeks and months. Um, so we'll start out with a new module. Yet, um, new provider demo. Um, as of yet, um, the module also requires a couple of more uh, prerequisites um, so that the unit test integration works. Um, if you run PDK new provider and the provider name, um, it will point you to the documentation. Um, uh, which is here. Um, and you need this sync YAML here. Um, to install the, the additional dependency. Um, one of our next things that we want to do is um, to integrate the resource API uh, into the core Puppet agent uh, once we are uh, satisfied with that it actually um, works as we intend. Um, So now um, the additional things have been installed here, and I can say um, PDK new provider demo, um, and it creates this new files um, we need for the provider. Um, and let's uh, start it up in an editor here. So this is the, the module I just created. Um, and as you are used to, uh, the, oops. can you read that? Um, yeah, um, exactly what I showed before. Um, the ensure, by default it just creates an ensure and, uh, and a name property, but you can add additional properties here. Um, you can add parameters which are um, information that's not persistent into the system and just information for your provider on how, how to work. 
um, you can have doc strings in here. Um, all of the details of that are um, explained in detail in, in the readme of the resource API. Um, uh, what's probably more interesting to you is then the provider itself. Um, if you ever have touched one of those plugins, uh, you know that there is quite a bit of um, data wrangling going on to get the data from the manifest into a structure that you can actually work with. The instances method, the prefetch method, the exists method, um, the flush method, the property hash, and um, if you uh, touch more than a few of those, uh, you will likely have found multiple permutations of the same patterns over and over again, and uh, it's all very confusing. Um, the the users API uh, only requires you to implement two methods. One is the get method here. Um, in in the current provider, it, it's just a stupid example. It runs a command um, and processes it the standard out. Um, but what you need to do here is just return uh, an array of hashes um, that have the shape of your resource. So um, in the type, we saw it has a name and a true method, and here we just return hashes of that. Um, and uh, all, all of those hashes that get returned are then visible um, to, to Puppet as resources that are currently in the system. Um, in the simplest cases, like here in this example, uh, you can inherit from the simple provider, which gives you uh, a couple of lines of code of uh, base functionality, um, and then you get uh, you get called down here, either with create, update, or delete, um, depending on what Puppet wants from you, and those methods um, get passed in uh, a context for logging purposes, uh, the name of the resource that should be acted on, and again, a hash of the attributes that should be set in the system, and um, this allows you to very easily just have that little snippet of code that you need to either call an external API or run a local command um, to enforce the state that uh, should be in there. And that's, and finally, um, what we also do, uh, we render out a uh, unit test for this provider um, that provides a high uh, level of coverage for the generated code. One of the, since um, existing types of providers are so deeply tied into the puppet, uh, code base, it's always very hard to write uh, proper unit tests for them because you have to guess how Puppet is reacting in all those different uh, method calls that I listed before. Um, for the users API, you only have to test that um, if the get method is called with a context, it calls to, say, an external command, um, and if that external command returns a, a specific standard out, um, you can provide that in your um, uh, you, you can provide that in your test like here um, I have um, the, the command uh, creates an echo command here that, that was used in uh, in the example and then the test is the echo command uh, should receive run um, and return a standard out with some resources um, Uh, and for example, if the return of that command then is empty, um, get is expected to return empty. Um, and if, there, if the command returns some uh, output, um, the provider is expected to return uh, those resources. Um, we have uh, still quite a bit of time left, so uh, if you have specific questions, um, I'm more than happy to uh, to answer them. Uh, yes, please. Um, 
so the question was whether the PDK is uh, meant just to ease uh, volume providers or whether this here is a completely new type of provider. Um, and uh, there are um, two things going on here. One is the resource API jam itself. Um, and I have uh, um, and, and in the slides, I will upload them to the first and to Pentabar later. Um, in the, uh, the Resource API chain is basically usable without the PDK, um, but the PDK just makes it easier because it creates those three files for you. Um, uh, the resource, um, providers that provide with the resource API are usable with all Puppet versions uh, that we commercially support. Um, that's going, that is uh, Puppet 4.7 and uh, onwards um, because there are some infrastructure things that the API requires for the Puppet 4 data type support. Um, they are also usable with the open source versions of 4.7 and onwards. Um, uh, so they're fully integrated into into the Puppet ecosystem there. Um, I've only shown the PDK new provider thing because it makes it easier to get started and it gives you those, um, those few things um, to get you started without having to type loads of code. Yes, please. Sorry? Uh, yes, I can. I I don't see a future where we will um, remove the old API um, w within the next three to five years, right? Like um, there is still lots of content out there. It's still very useful um, to people. Um, uh, also, there are a couple of things that we currently can't do in the resource API. Um, like if you need for some reason access to the catalog. Um, very deliberately to avoid uh, entangling the resource API with Puppet itself. Um, we, the resource API currently doesn't give you access to the catalog. Some advanced uh, types currently do that. Um, we're looking into ways to solve that at a different level where you say you can um, post-process the entire catalog, um, but that's still um, on the roadmap. <laughs> um, but yeah, to, back to your original question over there. Is no plan currently to deprecate the, uh, the existing types of providers APIs. Uh, existing providers will work as uh, going forward as before. Um, I would be, I would gladly help any who want to port their code to the new API and get rid of um, approximately a third of the lines of code. Um, I would be happy to help. I'm always um, on the public user email list uh, or if you on, on Slack if you ping me uh, as develops. Um, also, um, I forgot to mention, linked from the Public Resource API is also example code of uh, more, for more fully fledged um, providers. Like I ported one of the things I did, I ported over the app key in uh, app key management provider in an afternoon. Um, as I said, it has now approximately a third less lines codes, and the unit test coverage went from. 20%, uh, which is basically all the commands and the, the definition, uh, 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 the definition statements of Ruby um, to 100%, where really every single line of the provider is, is tested in depth, and there's a, a high confidence in there that actually, uh, if you change something in there, the unit test will actually then tell you that oh, your person here has broken or this specific uh, edge case um, uh, needs fixing. install the gem currently both in the Puppet server and the Puppet agent gem environment. Um, since we're still in development, um, so there's a 1.0 release on the horizon, um, but we're still looking for real world validation of uh, that what, what we built here actually works for you folks. Um, so currently we still need to install it. Um, we're currently internally 
specking out a Puppet 6 platform release for maybe later this year, maybe not. I, it's still unclear, but that would definitely be a point in time when I, I would uh, aim for getting the Nuisance API integrated into Puppet proper as, as a default component. And at that point, then you would not have to have any additional installs. Uh, no. Um, obviously, if if you are jam, uh, if you use specific um, uh, if you use specific features of the API, uh, then those need to be available on the agents that are running the code. Um, but once we we get into a maturing uh, of this, I I would not expect too many more releases. Um, there was another question. Okay. Awesome. Thank you.